Welcome to the Awakened and Aligned podcast. I'm your host, Shannon Kaiser, and I'm so glad to be here with you today. Man, the world is in chaos, but today we're going to connect to calm. And I have a transformational teacher here that I brought and handpicked for you to really help us through this time by addressing this craziness with an aspect of surrender. I hear from many of you a lot of the times, how do we let go? How do we surrender into what is? How do we just move forward? And I think with everything that's going on out in the world, it's important for us to check in inside with ourselves. And that is exactly why I brought Cute Blacks in here today. He's a transformational teacher, a speaker, a visionary, and a coach and a guide, and also the national best-selling author of not only You Are the One, but the recent book, The Magic of Surrender. And I got to tell you, as you know, the people I bring on the show have to have some type of impact in my own life or a resonance. And when I was at the bookstore, I literally saw this book. It was face out. And the cover was first and foremost grabbed me with the beautiful colors. But when I saw the words, the magic of surrender, it pulled me in. And not only is this something we all need right now, but it is something that can help us lead forward with more grace and ease. So welcome, Cute. How are you today? Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. I want to just dive in right away and talk <laughs> about how you share that you're a transformational <laughs> truth teacher. What does that mean to you? And what is a truth teacher? Uh, I say it's pretty straightforward. I help people get in touch with the truth of who they are, the truth of their being, their true essence, their true selves, their true identity. I help people reconnect uh, with the true essence of, of, of themselves and live that in the world. So I help people get in touch with their truth. You know, from <clears throat> the moment we're born, we Absolutely. begin getting conditioned. We get conditioned by society. We get conditioned by the media. We get conditioned by the parents. I like to say that I don't coach people. I don't even teach people. I don't train people. If anything, I uncoach, I unteach, I untrain, because I think uh, in our purest essence, when we're born, we're, we are whole, perfect, complete beings. If you look at a child, a child will jump on table and 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 dance and express itself it doesn't care if it's fat if it's skinny if it's tall if it's short a child will just start singing it's not so you know as children we're not so self-conscious i think that's why when we look into a child's eyes we are reminded of the purity and the, and the perfection of, of our own selves. That's what we melt when we look into a child's eyes because we're, we are reminded of that. And so for me, uh, we just begin to lose touch with that over time. You know, we meet our parents and we're born into a framework. We're all born into a framework that is <clears throat> preset, preconditioned from parents and generations and grandparents and we meet our parents and they're just doing the best that they can do based on their upbringing and par their parents and and their childhood and so we're all as human beings i think born into some level of dysfunction to a degree and we all experience some level of trauma and so through that we begin to lose touch with our own truth with our own essence with our own light with our own perfection and so to me, the key is, is, is helping people remember. And, and so I think two things happen too as children. We're born free, um, but as we meet our parents, uh, perhaps there was pain, perhaps there was abuse, perhaps there was, um, <clears throat> perhaps they just went around or they abandoned us or they just didn't know how to meet our emotional needs in some way. And so uh, we learned, firstly, how to shut down, disconnect, and to not feel the, the pain of what was going on around us. And so we started to suppress our feelings, suppress our emotions, to function and survive. And before you know it, layers and layers and layers of, let's say, unfelt, unprocessed, unacknowledged uh, feelings that we started to suppress began to layer and layer and layer on top of our uh, light on top of our essence. And so that's one way we begin to, you could say in quotation marks, lie to ourselves about who we are and what we feel. And then we also start learning how to uh, go into the world and the sense of, you know, who, who, who do I need to be in order to be loved? Who do I need to be in order to be loved, validated, accepted uh, by parents, by society? And so we start to uh, contort ourselves into a certain shape shape of who we think that we need to be in order to get love validation and approval and so the shape that we start to uh, 
become, the shape of ourselves that we start to contort ourselves into, uh, we hold very tightly onto that gets reinforced. And we think that is who we are, but we don't realize, many of us actually don't realize that we've been conditioned. And so the degree to which we are conditioned is the degree to which we're not free. And the degree to which we're conditioned is the degree to which we're not in touch with our truth. And so I think it's all about helping people get in touch with the truth. Absolutely. That's a beautiful really way to describe it, but do you think it's all by design, so to speak, our souls come here to kind of learn how to return to love? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think ultimately, this realm is is not, uh, shall we say, a utopia or a perfect domain, it's a three-dimensional domain of, of duality, and so I think as spiritual beings, we incarnate into this human existence, mm. uh, because our souls are seeking to, to learn, to grow, and to evolve, and there's some right. soul lessons that we, we incarnated to learn, and to me, life itself is not about perfection, life itself in this domain, I, I like to say life is the uh, classroom for our soul's evolution and every situation, every relationship, every experience, even, even if it's painful, even if it's challenging, ultimately is the evolutionary curriculum for us to learn, to grow, to evolve, and to, uh, I would say, find out more of who we really, really, really are through the experiences uh, of life and relationships and to, and to, uh, to live what we are, which is essentially love. And so, yeah, yeah you know, Absolutely. life isn't perfect. Life is challenging. Life is, life is up, life is down. Life is, life is everything and nothing. I think that's, that's the beauty of it. It takes a tremendous amount of courage, I think, to be human, to open one's heart and to dare to love despite uh, all of the pain and the suffering and the challenges and the difficulties. But I think all of the challenges, difficulties are really meant to, uh, shall we say, crack us open and burn away everything inside of us, all the illusions inside of us that isn't love so that through it all, we can reconnect to the source of love that we are and, and live that in the world. Ah, yes, I'm right there with you. I feel as I'm hearing you talk about this, it feels like collectively humanity, the world right now, we are being cracked open. And it, you know, some people are really having a hard time. There's so much struggle, but with hearing what you're saying and, and listening to these words and really applying them and putting them in our heart, what would you say? It really feels almost like we're burning away all the illusions right now. And we're collectively ascending into a higher place of being and realizing and letting go of those illusions. This, can you talk yeah. a little bit about this current time? Yeah, I think this, this current time is an intense time. And all of us that are listening to this conversation, all of us that are born during this time, uh, as challenging as it is, I just want, I would say to everyone that it's no accident that you were born. Rest assured that the fact that you were born is a sign that you're meant to be here, is a sign that your participation in the evolutionary awakening of the consciousness of humanity is necessary. Um, it's destined that you were here and that I think we've all incarnated at this time to participate in, in the conscious awakening of what's happening right now. So it's meant to be, you know, so I, I would Absolutely. just tell, every, tell everyone, uh, just trust, yes. trust, trust that this is where you're meant to be as difficult as it looks. Trust that this is the, the, the time you're meant to be in and uh, the world, I think, needs each and every one of our gifts. You know, I think on, on the surface level, it, it, it definitely is challenging. It's intense. It's, you know, some people, I've heard people say what's happening on the planet is messed up. It's, it's, it's all of it. And, and, and none of it at the same time. But as we look at it, I think there is a deeper level that is seeking to happen in any healing or transformational process for true healing to happen, for true, authentic, real healing to happen, even on a personal human level, we must at some point go beyond just positive thinking and affirmations. And, you know, we must go to the depths of our own soul, the depth of our own psyche. And so we must at some point uh, excavate and bring to light 
all of those parts and aspects of ourselves and feelings and emotions that we've learned to suppress. And so part of a healing process, any real authentic healing process, is the purification of our consciousness, is the purification of our shadow and the willingness to face our shadow, uh, those mm -hmm. things we've, we've suppressed and pushed down, those insecurities, those prejudices, the, the self-hatred, the, the pain, et cetera, et cetera. So, I, so as I look at planet, the planet that we live in, planet Earth, um, I feel as though, uh, yes, all of the things that as a collective we have tended to suppress is coming up right now. It's all coming to the surface mm -hmm. for us to be, uh, for us to see, for us to acknowledge, for us to heal, for us to yes. embrace, for us to love, for us to integrate, for us to purify. And, and, and so on one level, it looks very challenging, and it is on another level. I really think we are going through perhaps the uh, a time of great quickening, a time of great awakening, a time of pure, this is a time of purification, that everything that has been in the darkness m has to come to light. And Absolutely. we have to look at it and face it. And, you know, in many ways, we're facing it in, in, in the form of what's going on in our world, in the systemic racism that's coming out, police brutality, the, the, pol the, the political climate, the corruption, etc. It's all coming out for us yeah. to see and face. But when we look at the world, what we also have to realize is it's easy to look at the world and go, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that president, that prime minister, that leader, what have you. But what we have to realize and acknowledge if we really want to do our part to, to facilitate the shift is the world itself that we see right now playing out in front of us on the news, you know, in, in, in our communities, uh, <clears throat> the world that we see is really a mirror, mirror manifestation of our collective consciousness combined. There really is no world out there. The world we see and the leaders we see and, and, and everything that we see happening is a projected manifestation of the collective consciousness of all of us combined. And mm -hmm. so I think if we really want to make a difference, if we really want to do our part, if we really want to have an impact on the world, uh, I think where we can all start is be willing to take responsibility for the mirror and look at the world and, and, and really ask ourselves, what is, what is it reflecting to me about my own consciousness? Where do I, where do I terrorize myself with self-hatred? Where do I drop bombs of, of self-hatred and judgment towards myself in my own consciousness? You know, where, where is the division within myself? What parts of myself are not united and integrated? And so I think if we're able to really take responsibility and, and bring peace inside of ourself, inside of our psyche, inside of our hearts, inside of our souls, and bring ourselves into more harmony and self-loving, then we do our, we begin to do our small part in shifting the fabric of the entire consciousness of the planet. Absolutely. I'm right there with you. And it feels that it is all connected. And part of this and what we're seeing, as you said, so clearly, is this collective kind of looking at the shadow. And when you said a time of great awakening, it, it's no doubt so many of us are awakening to there's got to be more to life. And you talked at the very beginning about this kind of, you know, I love that you say life is a classroom for our soul's evolution. And so we've been conditioned and then we kind of crack open into realizing, wow, we've been lose, living in almost this illusion or this place of conditioned. And, and what would you say to what happens on the journey right when we start to wake up and the whole world shifts and we start to realize, wow, there could be more to life. I am the creator of my reality. I don't have to be the victim to the circumstances in my life, but I'm actually in more control. It's almost everything you do gives people their power back. And, and what is that first part when they start to awaken what do you mean the first part so what i mean is when someone is collectively kind of waking up to mm. the illusions almost seeing beyond kind of what they've been existing in so mm -hmm. whether it's the dark night of the soul or whether it's seeing the collective shadows right now and saying wow this has been going on for so long and i didn't even know there's kind of this moment I find from a psychology standpoint or from a moment, and you've probably experienced it in your own journey, where you awaken to the next level of you. Um, and, and what I mean is the next part is how do you mm. navigate that time with more grace and ease when everything you thought you knew is, sure. is actually not what you sure. what is true? Sure, sure, sure. I, look, I think if we're growing and evolving as human beings, 
Uh, if we're on the spiritual journey, which is really about growth and evolution, life is about growth and evolution. And so uh, if, we are, if we are consciously participating in the growth and evolution uh, in, this, in this life, then it is totally natural for us to outgrow old systems, old structures, old ways of being, old identities, to outgrow who we were. And so I think if we're not outgrowing things and leaving things behind, that's just a sign that we're stagnant and we're not evolving and we're not growing. And so uh, there comes a point, I would say, in the evolutionary process where the life that you have created for yourself is actually or becomes, no matter, no matter how great it is, how amazing it is, how fantastic, how successful, it starts becoming too small for what yes. your soul is seeking to become. Uh, and, and that's that's to me that's a good sign it can be a very scary thing because wow what you've created might be everything you knew everything you thought you were it might be how you've, you you've gotten validation and success etc etc in the world but there comes a moment where you start feeling it's too small you're mm -hmm. not growing it. and yes. that can be a very scary moment and what we tend to do as human beings in that moment is we tend to hold on we tend to hold on to what we know. We tend to hold on to what was. We tend to hold on to the familiar. We tend to hold on to who we were out of safety, out of security, you know, out of self-preservation. But holding on to what is no longer aligned really simply keeps us stuck, stuck mm -hmm. in the old patterns. But this is what we tend to do. We, we tend to hold on. And so I would invite everyone to really look at what is it in your life that is no longer aligned? What yes. is it in, in your life that is no longer authentic and uh, no longer a true expression of who you are? And I think one of the, shall we say, gifts potentially, potential gifts, if we're willing to uh, peel the wrappers away of last year, of the pandemic, of COVID, is it stopped everything. It shut everything down, right or wrong, whatever people's beliefs are. Uh, I, I get it. That's fine. Let's not get into that. But Regardless, it for a moment stopped everything. So it forced us as a humanity to pause. It forced us as humanity to pause. And in that pause, because I think we, we were going so fast that many of us, we were going so fast doing, 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 you know, in a groove, in a groove, in a groove, in a groove. And, and the pause, I think, forced us to question, who am I? And yes. why am I doing what I'm doing? And is what I'm doing authentic? And is what I'm doing what I'm meant to be doing? And is what I'm doing the deepest expression of my purpose? Because sometimes we can also get caught in what I call a trap of success. We, we do something, it works, we get reinforced. We do it again, it works, we get reinforced, we succeed. We do something, works, it gets reinforced, we succeed. We keep doing it, we keep doing it, we keep doing it, gets reinforced, we succeed more we keep doing it now we are in a groove we get comfortable in that groove but we're no longer growing we're no longer evolving we're no longer truly participating in the process of evolution that is life we get stagnant even in our success even in things working and so i would invite people to really sit with what is it that i'm currently doing and this is part of what i think last year and even this year and this pandemic is giving us the opportunity to step back to reevaluate to loosen the grip on our identities and dig a little deeper which takes courage but i think this is the uh process spiritual process that we are being initiated to into a deeper way of being and so i would invite people to sit with the question what is it that i'm doing that's working like it's working, it's working, it's fine, it's good, it's fine. What is it I'm doing that's working? And if I do more of it, how is that inhibiting the next level of my growth and evolution? How is that actually slowing down, stopping the next level of my growth and evolution and aliveness and progress as a soul? Because I think the real purpose of life at the deepest level Yes, we all have maybe individual purposes of what we're here to give and what we're here to express. But I think the real purpose of life is, that it is really about learning the lessons and evolving uh, our consciousness and our souls, evolving through no matter, through, through whatever the experiences that we're going through, whatever the relationship, whatever the challenge. And so I think that's, that's the real uh, marker yeah. Of, of true success. And so if you're going through a time where things are falling apart, and this is how you know you have outgrown something, two things. Number one, you begin to feel a sense of dissatisfaction. Now, a lot of people were feeling a sense of dissatisfaction over the last years, but didn't do anything about it. 
And yeah, so they exactly. just kept going. We just kept going because we were in that comfortable groove. Right. But this is another re- another way that you know you've outgrown something. Life starts just falling apart. Yes. Life, as you know, it just begins falling apart as uh, as an evolutionary impetus. Life is pushing us. The evolutionary energy of life starts pushing us because ultimately uh, life is about evolution. And ultimately life, I say, doesn't care about your comfort or convenience. Life cares about your evolution. And so that's how you know if things start falling apart, one, way, one, 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 one response is to go, oh, shit, and, and, and go into fear and collapse, which is natural. Another response is to get curious and actually uh, get excited because you know you are, shall we say, you are graduating the old level. Yes. A few a few questions that we can ask to participate in the unraveling. So I know that 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 might be challenging, folks, because if life's falling apart in the moment, it can be scary. It can be challenging. I get it. It can be difficult. I get it. But just know, trust if it's th- if it's falling apart, if that's what's happening, you're graduating. You're getting yes. ready to, to 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 graduate. And so what I would what I would invite you to do is rather than the automatic holding on, what what I, what I would invite you to do is to actually take a deep breath and let go and ask yourself these questions. Because one of the things that keeps us stuck are all the lies that we tell ourselves. So question number so and we're constantly as human beings lying to ourselves about who we are, what we want, why we're doing what we're doing. Maybe you're in a relationship that you know is stagnant. Maybe you're in a relationship that you know is not working. Maybe you're working a job that you hate that is not the true expression of your purpose, but you're staying out out of comfort. And so in many ways, we're lying to ourselves. So the question number one is simple. What lies am I telling myself? Really have the courage to sit with. What lies am I telling myself? And start, start acknowledging some of those lies. And we tend to know what they are. Number two, what am I pretending to not know? In many ways, as human beings, we are, I would say, pretending to not know. We play a game of confusion. Like, I don't, I, I'm not sure if I should leave. I'm not sure yes. if this relationship is, is right. I'm not sure if I should, you know, uh, move. But, but deep down, we know, we know we've outgrown it, but we're just afraid. And so I think we're afraid of the consequences of, of what will happen. So number three is I would invite people to really sit with the pain, the cost of what it, it what it is to not be growing, not be evolving, the cost of what it is to not be living truth, not be living in alignment with your deepest, deepest, deepest authentic truth, because there is a cost and there is a pain. And if you're feeling a pain, because usually you will feel pain, but what we tend to do when we start outgrowing something or something is not right, or we're we're betraying ourselves in some way, uh, what we tend to do, we will feel the pain but because the pain doesn't feel good and we're afraid of what acknowledging that pain might mean, we tend to distract ourselves. We tend to drink it away, sex it away, drug it away, busy it away, social media away, whatever it is so that we don't get in touch, so that we don't allow ourselves to feel the truth. And so I think one thing we can do during that time is to, is to create space and time to be still so that you can feel the pain and you can feel that the, see pain is really a messenger. Pain is seeking to tell us something. Pain is simply showing us where we're not in alignment. When we're not in alignment in some way, it's meant to be painful. Pain isn't bad, it's just a signpost showing us there's something here we need to look at. There's something here where we need to go a bit deeper. So create space in your life where you be still and you sit and you listen. Listen to your soul. Listen to what the next level that is seeking to express through you is. Listen to that. You will feel that impulse. You will feel the expression of, 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 of life, of your soul moving you in, in, in a certain direction. Listen, yeah. yes. feel, yes. connect, you know, and, and, and allow that pain also to move you in a different direction. I think as a result of people being grounded and forced to be still this year, a lot of people have been forced to get in touch with the deeper truth of what they were always feeling, like they couldn't go to work, they couldn't go into the office. And, and as a result, months went by and they had they began to finally acknowledge the truth of, I never liked my job anyway. You know, I, I, hate, I hated my job. And, and now maybe it's time for me to acknowledge that now that I, I'm not going back into the office. And so I think it takes courage to acknowledge the truth. But I really believe the truth is part of what sets us free. And the acknowledgement of the truth is what people can do during that time. And, and, and last thing I'll say is sometimes we don't let ourselves acknowledge the truth because we're afraid 
of what the consequences might mean. We're afraid of, oh shit, if I really acknowledge the truth, I'm going to have to do something about it. One thing that will really help is if you take the pressure off of yourself from having to take any action on acknowledging the truth. Because when you take the pressure off, it's like, okay, I don't have to, I don't have to take any action. Take the pressure off. Then you can just allow yourself to feel the truth without any pressure or fear of having to do something about it. Usually this allows you to acknowledge a deeper level of your truth because the pressure is gone. Yeah, you bring up such an interesting point as you were sharing that. I was feeling into the feelings that we feel when we're going through this. Mm -hmm. And you touched on different points. And I think that's something very interesting that we can apply to this current time too. your feelings. And you talk about how important they are to feel. But ultimately, there's things that are kind of presented to us, but sometimes we feel different. And so getting in touch with your inner world is really the theme of everything you're sharing. And one of the things I know you talk about both in your book, and then a lot of the work you do is this idea that humans in general, I know I see it in my coaching practice, you probably as well, are really terrified uh, and afraid of happiness. So here we are talking about discovering your truth, because what that equals is freedom, happiness, joy, bliss. But at a a fundamental level, there's a big part of us. And I feel that maybe it's a lot of the times when we're driven by ego and you talk about the ego is always seeking, seeking, you know, I must do this to get that. Talk a little bit more about the collective shadow of being afraid of happiness and how we can move through that and heal it. You know, I, th- I think many, in, in many ways, the, the ego, which is not good or bad, the ego is really the sense of who we perceive ourselves to be, uh, that based on memories, based on past, based on beliefs, based on uh, identification. And so the job of the ego is to reinforce its sense of identity, reinforce the sense of who we think we are. This is yeah. the job of the ego. It's, it's and job, so, yeah. and so, so the ego itself is not necessarily a real thing. The ego itself is a process of identification. And we've been conditioned through society and media and parents and life and living to identify with ourselves. And so the ego's job, is to reinforce its, its, its uh, existence. And part of how it reinforces its existence is to, to constantly be doing, 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 struggling, 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 yes. struggling, 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 pushing, 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 suffering, 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 suffering. Because if Cheating. I, if, if, if I, if, if I, if I, um, if I <laughs> struggle and it's really, shit's really hard and I struggle, then I, the, 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 the perceived sense of I, identity, yes. I feel like I am real. I feel like I am doing something. I feel like I am the doer. I feel like I am existing. And so, so the ego, that, 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 that aspect of us is terrified of things being in flow is terrified of things being easy (laughs) is terrified of just life flowing because if life flowed, then what, what would I be who would exactly. I, how would I exist and so and so and if I was just happy God forbid happy for no reason if I was just happy for no <laughs> exactly. reason then 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 who would I be and so yeah. that sense of just being happy for no reason is absolutely terrifying for the ego mm-hmm. and so it's always looking to do something, achieve something, get something, create something, push something, for something, to feel a sense of, see, I exist, I exist, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And that's why sometimes we even create suffering for ourselves, we abuse ourselves, we create suffering for ourselves to feel like, oh, I'm here, I feel that pain, I feel that suffering, oh, I I, I exist. And so I think we have to just be aware of the pattern inside of us and realize that we are not the pattern, we are not the ego, we are not that dynamic. And if if we can begin to observe the dance that we do, if we can begin to observe the dynamic, if we can observe this in quotation marks ego, which is a collection of patterns that are moving, if we can observe the ego, something starts happening. There is a space between what is observing and the pattern itself. 
And in that space, there is a bit of freedom because you begin to realize that if I'm observing this dynamic playing out, then I'm not it. I'm not this collection of beliefs and memories and thought forms and ideas and identities and, and things that are playing out, creating some form of suffering for myself. I'm not it. Then there's a spaciousness and a freedom yes. that starts happening. And then the grip of the identity, the self-identification can begin to, shall we say, soften and loosen and relax. And we realize and then, it's safe. And, 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 yeah, and then we realize that in this moment, right now, the nature of this moment, the nature of what we are, the nature, if we really drop into the nature of what we are in this moment, we, we, what we, really, we start realizing that we are happy. Yeah. Happy, ha happiness, you know, and, it's and I'm, I'm, not talking happy. About, I'm not talking about pleasure. You know, pleasure is fleeting. But true happiness is beyond doing or achievement or non-achievement. The nature of what we are is happy. And that's why you look at a child. A child is just happy. Unless it's hungry. But, you know, for the most part, a child is just, a baby <laughs> yes, is just, of just happy. It's not, it's not happy because it won a prize. It's not happy because it won a million dollars. It's just, you know, gurgling. And it's just because it's, mm. it's, it's, it's happiness is its natural innate yes. state of being. Yeah. And I, I think it's aligned with joy. I feel like a lot of the work I do is about joy and joy seeker. The last book I wrote, it really comes back to what you just said. It's safe to be happy. And I think our ego tries to convince us. Otherwise you did a beautiful job just kind of bringing us back around there. I appreciate that. I am wondering in your own life, how you came to this work. And if you've had kind of a moment where you realized you were operating perhaps from ego and had to shift into the heart. Um, I came to this work. Let's see, you know, on, on some level, um, from a very young age, I always felt a desire, a deep desire to help people. Um, I, as a kid, I, I was a very sensitive kid. And so I would feel people's suffering very deeply. And as a kid, for some reason, that really impacted me, you know, and I feel people suffering and there was a deep desire to alleviate people's suffering. I didn't know how, I didn't know what that would look like. Um, but I began, I, be, I began to become very obsessed with just trying to understand life. Uh, growing up in London, uh, I would see people who had every reason to be happy yet were miserable. And I, I grew up around a lot of people who didn't have very much, myself included. Uh, and, and, and yet seemed to be fulfilled and happy and they had every reason to not be happy. And so I just began at a very young age to ask myself the questions of like, what is the purpose of life? You know, what, is it just to wake up, make money, make babies, buy a house, go on vacation and then die? Like surely there has to be more. And, mm -hmm. and so this, this became my constant questioning as a kid and just trying to understand life. And, and also I grew up in a very uh, spiritual environment. And so this was a, a huge foundation for me and a blessing. In a certain sense, uh, my first memories as a young boy was, I must have been seven or eight, and, and seeing a crippled woman crawling on the sand. And she picks up the sand that this man walks on and wipes it on her face and stands up. And week after week, I grew up seeing blind people see and deaf people hear the same man who said she picked up would look at a woman in a wheelchair and say, why are you in this wheelchair? You're, you're not sick, stand up. Do you believe? And sure enough, she would stand up and get healed. And so week after week, I grew up around miracles. This man was my father. And so my father built 300 churches in Ghana, West Africa, and built a huge church of about 5,000 people every Sunday in London. And so this was the environment I grew up in, the sense of possibilities. Things like this and, and miracles just seemed just normal to me, you know? And so at age 18, you could say my speaking career, sorry, age eight, my speaking career really began uh, yeah. when, when my father just threw me in the audience and said, son, speak. And Amazing. That, that's when things started. And at age 14, I was ordained as a minister and given the mandate to take over my father's uh, spiritual organization. And, you know, it kind of in charge of hundreds of thousands of people. But I knew, if I'm honest, I knew that that was not my path. In that moment, I knew that that was not my destiny, but I was too afraid 
to have the conversation with my father. I was too afraid to confront him. I was too, I was afraid that if I dared to be myself, if I told him the truth, if I spoke my truth, that I would be outcast, that I'd be alone, that uh, I would lose love. And so I went through a real deep, dark night of the soul for about four years. And when I turned 18, uh, I chose not to go to university. And I realized I had certain decisions to make. And I felt, I, I felt this calling, my soul calling me to come to, the, to America, to come to Los Angeles. This is where a lot of the authors I'd read about as a kid, the spiritual self-help authors lived. And so I wanted to come and meet them and go into this field and learn from them. And then I looked into my future and I saw that my path was set out for me and uh, I could be successful by the world standards. But if I didn't have myself, if I didn't have my soul, if I didn't have my truth, then what the hell do I have, you know? And so at 18, I, 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 I had to really confront the truth in my heart and make a decision. I realized nothing was worth compromising my soul. Nothing was worth compromising my truth and had that conversation with my father, prepared to lose everything. Uh, told him I'm not taking over. We didn't speak for two years. Very, very, very challenging and difficult and hard. Um, but there was a knowing in my heart that something was guiding me. And, and that's when, after that, I ended up winning a green card in the lottery, uh, came to Beautiful. the US. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's what really uh, affirmed for me that I think when we truly surrender and follow our souls, when we truly surrender and follow our truth, um, life rises to support us in, yes. in unique ways that we can't even imagine, even in this moment. And so that began my journey, you know, coming to the US, meeting teachers, meeting mentors, uh, ended up traveling the world to. Thailand, studied with monks, to Israel, studied with rabbis, to India, studied with enlightened masters. And, and it was through my own, my own journey and my own process that I came to a point of wanting to, feeling the alignment and timing to, to work with people. And it just started, started very humbly, one-on-one -on -one in a room, and went from one-on-one, -on -one and it just kept expanding and growing from there over the years. Uh, it's so beautiful. And you said life rises to support you. And if we were to sum up our conversation today, it really comes back to alignment and awakening to your heart and understanding that when we, you said it best just now, confront the truth of our heart and want to leave us as we close down today's interview, nothing is worth compromising your soul. That is the highlight of everything you're sharing, because when you step into your true integrity, your purpose and your truth, life supports you, the universe supports you and freedom is yours. And that's what you're living proof of and all of the work you do. I'm thankful that you're here today sharing your wisdom and your new book, The Magic of Surrender is out now. Where can people find you? Um, yeah, just my website, uh, coopblackson.com, also Instagram. Coop Blackson, say hi. Facebook, Coop Love Now, say hi. Great. And then the final thing I want to ask is of all the things that you do and your mission mm. moving forward, you have books, you have speaking, and you're talking about alignment. Where do you feel your, your passion is the most and how you serve best? Wow. Uh, for me, the favorite thing I, I love facilitating and doing is my event in Bali. I do a 12 day deep dive transformational uh, transformational journey unlike anything. It's 12 days in Bali, done this for the last nine years. Obviously uh, last year we couldn't do it, but hopefully gearing up to do it again. And you know, we, we take people and take them through a really deep, profound process where we unplug them from, from life and help them become aware and aware of their conditioning, clear their patterns, connect connect them to who they are and then send them forward to serve and make a huge impact. So that's, that's for me, perhaps the favorite thing I do. Yes. Oh, I felt that too. And so people can go to your website and learn about that. And so thanks Absolutely. for all of your work. It's been a pleasure to be here with you today and so have a beautiful rest of your day. Thanks for joining the awakened and aligned podcast. Oh,